Back here, year two. Coach, thanks so much for having me in your office and a little interview again. Yeah, appreciate you having me uh, with you. Let's start. I want to go back, obviously, last year, your first year, year two. What did you learn? You're a guy that always likes to improve, yeah. get better. If you could boil it down to a couple of things, what was the most important things you learned that you're going to take to make an even better year two? Well, it's, and it's, we've used the word a lot, but it's efficiency uh, in every part of the program. Uh, in our preparation, our meeting time, 11 o'clock kickoffs. <laughs> you had to adjust to, to that, the things that you can and can't do, put a premium on, getting the guys in the bed. And, uh, but just being overall more efficient with um, our time that we have and, uh, and then situationally, uh, you know, with our schemes and with our ability to execute. And I think it goes without saying that we've got to improve in third and fourth downs and uh, red zone offense and defense and then even in you know field position was a, a really critical component. It's so simple things like we gave up, we punted uh, the ball and, and let the ball roll into the end zone or punted it into the end zone 10 times uh, last year as opposed to pinning them inside the 10. Well, every one of those touchbacks that we had uh, turned into a touchdown for the opponent. 10, 10 times and 10 touchdowns, that's not a good uh, recipe. So, uh, you know, being more efficient in all those areas, being better, improved, more knowledgeable, better schemes. Uh, and then we've improved our roster. Uh, and so that's, I think that'll be as big of an impact that you'll see more competitive depth across the board between our high school recruits and, you know, several uh, transfers. And then the returning players being better at uh, what they do, knowledge, physically, explosively. Uh, speed, all of those things. And second year with Schmidt, a full entire cycle. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, one score games, 0-4 last year. How do you flip that? Like, what's the key? Because, you know, as bad as six and seven is, y'all could have been a 10-win team last year. Yeah. You make a play or two here. Instead of, you know, everyone says, I'll oh, just make a play or two. How do, you, how do you take those from being losses to wins this season? Yeah, and it was really over five. Uh, we, we lost to K-State by seven, and we lost four games by three points. So uh, it's, it's everything. There's, you, you don't need everything to happen to go your way, uh, if you will, but you need, um, you need to be more efficient. And so it's being, at the end of the day, you could peel the stat sheet back. We've, you know, we've got to hit, have a hit rate in a, on third down defense and be, you know, closer to 70% successful and, you know, or fourth down where we're 50% successful. You know, we've got to be in the 75% range on, you know, red zone efficiency. And, uh, and we've got to be better. You know, if you have one touchback or one uh, poop situation a game, we need to make sure that's not a touchback. You know, you're a touchdown better at least uh, doing that. So it's a lot of those things, you know, and again, it's, um, having more competitive depth, I think is going to have help us to have a better fourth quarter. And we had uh, the worst fourth quarter uh, in the conference last year. And so lots of reasons why, um, but I think uh, having a, a fresher, deeper football team will help us have a, help us to be a stronger fourth quarter team. I totally agree. Culture, you're, you're all about culture and it's such a, it's a foundation of any great program. Where's that culture at now, maybe compared to last year? Well, I think it's a healthy root system, you know. That if, if you don't focus on the root, you know, the root system will rot out and you have bad fruit. So it really, just to keep a healthy, you know, foundation in your program, you focus on the root. And that's, again, you, know, uh, you stay very committed to how you do what you do, your values, your people, your programming. Uh, stay consistent in all of those things and continue to nurture the root by bringing in great people that believe what you believe in, you know, that value the things that you value. And if that's, you know, blue collar work ethic, if that's education, if that's, you know, connection and relationships, uh, if, if, you know, you don't want guys to come here and understand you don't just have instant success, you know, success, success comes from not what you do occasionally, but what you do consistently. And so, you know, you like to find, you know, young people that value those things, that understand that, you know, it's a, it's a process and they invest in that process. So I think everything matters. You know, I've said that many, many times, but, you know, focus on the root. Don't get distracted. Um, there aren't no shortcuts. There's, there's the, the right ways, the hard way. And it's the only way, in my opinion. And, uh, 
and, and again, the success can never happen fast enough, but I do, my expectation is, you know, you'll be able to quantify it on the field more so, you know, this year than where we were a year ago. That, that kind of goes without saying, in my opinion, but uh, this is a game of doing, not of talking, and uh, this is a game of performance, not potential, and, uh, and I value that. I, I understand that, and, but I, and our guys do. I think you're going to see a, a, a group of guys that maybe they have a little chip on their shoulder, whatever that means. I think they're motivated and fueled by uh, some of the failure and shortcomings that we had, and, and, and understand you know what the expectations are here at Oklahoma. Nobody wants to hear uh, excuses and trying to justify failure. That ain't, that ain't it. And that's not you. That's not me. And uh, you own it, you learn from it, and then you, 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 you be about it. And that's, that's what it's all about. The right way is the hard way. I love that. That's, that's a great line. Let's talk about some of these players. They're going to make an impact on the field. Uh, defensively, I mean, no joke. That's not the standard that you hold your defenses to. What areas have you seen specifically growth here this fall camp that maybe you didn't see last year on the field? Well, there's depth. There's real depth. I see uh, a much less uh, drop off from the first and the second group. Any certain position group that has more yeah. depth or across well, the Well, it's really just the front seven. And then I, I do feel like we've got, you know, five safeties that can play winning football. Robert Spears, it might be a week or two before we get him into the lineup. He had a shoulder surgery he came off of last spring. but. Uh, the other group of guys uh, at safety, uh, Bowman and Bowen and Key Lawrence and uh, Reggie Pearson and then RJ, uh, really like that group of guys. Our Cheetahs, you know, a year ago moved Deshaun from an inside backer to an outside and he's really the only guy we had. Harrington got here a week to go in spring ball. We really didn't know, you know, I let him walk on, really didn't have a role for him. And, uh, and he's learning from playing corner to playing a new position. So between he and McCullough, amongst others, Sammy Omasaya has, has done a really nice job there. And then we're working some other guys, Bowen and uh, Pearson also working some of that. We got like some guys that can play. They can play man, they can play zone. Uh, they're tough, they're physical, they can blitz. They show up in the run game when they got to play in the box. We just got more guys. And then our front seven has got the most quality depth. You know, it's one thing to have numbers, and then it's another where well, they can line up and play winning football. They can execute, do what you want them to do, and you're always looking for improvement. But it's no comparison where we were a year ago. It, whatever that means, it just it's just we're different. And so that's a linebacker, that's a DN, that's a D tackle. Uh, and we've brought in Connor Near at linebacker, Desan McCullough, and then other guys have grown up and gotten better. Danny's a better version of himself. You know, Jaron Kanick played mostly Cheetah last year, and that was his first year of really playing defense full time. And so learning how to play was a, that's a real thing. And then uh, Kobe McKenzie uh, is also a sophomore now. And got a heavy hat. Richard Freshman, yeah, he's got concrete in his uh, helmet, and uh, along with Connor. And then, man, we're so much better at Will Linebacker. You know, Shane Witter's back. Uh, and then Kip Lewis, you know, he had 10 or 11 tackles in the spring game. Guy's a ball magnet, knows where the ball is, and playing physical. He's 188 pounds last year. He's our backup wheel linebacker, and, that, and that's not going to hold up. And he didn't know what to do, you know, just got here out of high school. And, uh, but, you know, he's 212 pounds or so, but he plays big. And then we got Lewis Carter also to, to play there. So these are real guys that, you know, they can run, they can strike, they can – I understand what it means to be a flat player and where their help is and things like that. So and I really like where we're at up front, you know, bigger, longer, stronger, and just more guys. And it's a lot of competitions making everybody better. You know, what, what happens when you get the guy that you're uh, lining up, you know, behind it, you know, he's a real dude, man. You, you get everybody's best every day in the meeting room, on the practice field, in the weight room, because you do this to play the game. You know, nobody wants to sit. So that's a good thing. Competition brings out the best in everybody. And I think you'll see that as a football team. I think you'll see, you know, the best version and, and better players, better performance as a result of that competition. Yeah, I had a Wake Forest game last year, and Rondell Bothroyd, he popped to me on film. He he's a football great player. For... He's disruptive. Um, he's physical. He can run through people. Uh, you know, he, he plays with heavy hands. You know, he's a bigger 
275, 280 he pound guy. He certainly can, yeah. Uh, and uh, but you know he might be the best one out there, you know. So right. he certainly can. And at times he will. And uh, but he's, you know, he can set an edge and you know, he likes to play and like he knows where the ball is. You know, and you like that. So you know, just the heavy-handed guys like that, and you can't get enough of that. And we've so we got better there. And Trace Ford, you know, he. He and probably R. Mason, excuse me, our two best pass rushers. And R. Mason looks natural. different this yeah, year than yeah, he did a year ago. He's closer to 250 than he is to 220. You know, he's about 215 last year as a true freshman. And but he's incredibly twitchy and explosive. And you now he's got a, a different toolbox. All these guys got different toolboxes. So now they can pull out different tools. Where maybe a year ago they may have had one tool. You know, some of them didn't have any tools, and uh, and then we're a little better inside. And so between, uh, you know, bringing Co and Jordan Kelly, uh, the competitions helped them improve. And through the last eight months, they've gotten better, uh, and they, they've got a, a different level of you know maturity that matters. Um, you know, different mindset that matters, and then they've improved in the weight room, and explosion, and r running, and then again the competition has really helped those guys grow. So between, you know, DJ Terry and, you know, Devon Sears, uh, Jacob Lacey, you know, those guys in particular. And then we've had some young guys like uh, uh, Champ Sanders, you know, or uh, uh, Grayson Halton, you know, that, you know, a year ago he's 250 pounds and now he's 290 pounds. So uh, the girth matters, but it doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing when we're a little better at knowing what we're doing. Again, I. It's, we still have a long way to go, um, but we're better. And, and w where that is, I don't know. You know, that this is, again, you got to go play the games. And, and wherever we start the year, my expectation is we'll be better at the end of the year through going through it and developing and taking more reps and things like that. So I'm really excited about the group because it's hungry, they're driven, uh, the work ethic is, is strong, and their willingness to learn. We have a better football IQ. And on uh, both sides of the ball, uh, dealing you know with these guys, so it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. The, the transfers that we brought, you know, they their only expectation was they have an opportunity, and they've had tremendous humility, have bought into how we're doing, what we're doing, um, understanding and valuing that they're going to get what they earn. You know, there's nothing given to them, and and they allow uh, themselves to be uncomfortable every day. Uh, and that's how you grow and get better. So that's been fun. You know, they, they're going to do it no matter what. If they're going to be on the on the team, but it makes it a lot more enjoyable as a coach that allow that when the young men allow you to take them to some tough places and they accept it and they take the coaching, they take the correction, they take the uh, the humility of you ain't running out with the ones, but when you get in there, man, make your opportunity count. You know, and be ready. And so we've it's been fun. Uh, to deal with all those guys that you know, the transfers that I'm, you know, talking about, whether that's Troy Everett or that's, uh, you know, Rouse, you know, on the offensive line, or Brennan Thompson, or you know, Andrew Anthony, all these guys, they've they've come in here with tremendous success in their background, but they've come in here and trying to do it the Oklahoma way, and that's fun, you know, because this is the program that's what this program deserves. No doubt about that. I, I can't wait to see the defense. I'm also excited about the offense. Offensive line, we used to always talk iron sharpens iron. Best way to make that D-line better is good physical contact every day. Am I crazy to say that this offensive line be even better than they were a year ago? And that's what losing a first round pick in Anton Harrison. Yeah, and that's, it doesn't, people say, what? We lost three guys, you know, but we feel that this has a chance. We stay healthy. Uh, can you to continue to come on here like we are with that that second group that you know this is going to be a you know a deeper um, more talented offensive line than even what we had a year ago so again this is a game of doing and so but we really like where we're at uh, inside and outside and with the development and uh, I think a guy like a Savion Bird you're going to Hadn't heard a whole lot from him, but feel like he's he's ready to establish himself. He's 300 pounds, you know. His, his weight that has really fluctuated uh, way too much to be a guy that's you know 
you know, I always say the best ability is availability. And, you know, you're 265 pounds, you can't play, you know, you, you're not available and, or you're not reliable, you know. And so it's important that, um, you know, that we have the right guys, you know, uh, in that second group that can push the first group. And so a guy like a Troy Everett uh, is, man, he's had a great camp and he's been a great addition from App State. And then, you know, McCabe Mator, he's developed into, you know, one of our best leaders on our whole locker room, you know, and a year ago, he's just trying to find a role. And so he's really established himself as well. Andrew Rain has played a ton of football. And uh, Walter Rouse has played a ton of football. Four-year four starter at yeah. Stanford, yeah. Yeah, and he's smart, so he's able to pick up, you know, very, you know, he's the last guy to leave every day on the practice field. So these guys are guys that are, you know, Bill Biedenboe type of guys, you know, they like to work, like to grind. And, uh, you know, Jake Taylor's really coming on just a freshman a year ago. Jacob Sexton's gonna be available uh, early. And, uh, you know, Walter Parks, or uh, uh, Aaron Parks, you know, inside is another big strong guy that you know, can really uh, make a difference for us too. So, uh, love the group of guys. And again, we got great backs, you know, you gotta be able to, I want a humble football team, I want to run the football, I want to play great defense. And that's kind of foundationally who we want to be, and it sets up everything else. And I think that we'll have a chance to be able to do exactly that. Totally agree. Love the running back room, and the quarterback room actually has depth now. I'm curious, Dylan from last year to this year, and then Jackson Arnold, I mean, every time I see the young man, he seems like he gets better and better. Yeah, Dylan just brings you a level of consistency that that position has to bring. You know, and it's really like having the linebackers. If you the linebackers, if the linebackers can make up for any mistakes that are going up front. You can't, uh, you know, we, you, we can generate pressure if we have to, right? You like to be able to do it with a front four. Um, you know, whether or not we're there, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but linebackers in the run game in particular can make up for guys that aren't doing their job up front, as long as they're not getting, you know, knocked into another area code. Uh, you know, on, on offense, uh, you know, the quarterback got to be consistent like those linebackers do. And, and Dylan brings that to the table. He, he's got a, a, a calmness about him, you know, and a great disposition that, that's a good quality to have at that position. He responds well. Uh, he understands the offense. He understands defense. Has played a tremendous amount of football. But now he's backed up by a guy that, uh, that's learning how to play quickly. And has just, he's putting his best foot forward when it comes to uh, you know, learning and improving, you know, making less and less mistakes. And But when he does make mistakes, he's got, again, just the right kind of mindset to handle it the right way, strong, tough, and he wants to be a great teammate and he's willing to learn. And uh, But he'll be a guy that, you know, we'll have to find our opportunities to get him experience and uh, so we don't get into a place where we have to play him. Uh, if that moment comes and he hasn't played or you know doesn't feel comfortable or he's limited in what he can do and uh, but Jackson's got an incredible uh, future uh, you know and then you know, the other quarterbacks have done a good job you know whether it's Davis or general they're they're better than where they were a year ago for obvious reasons that's great I can't wait to see this team you know I am curious last year in the big 12 how important is it year two for you guys to bounce back and head into the SEC leave the big 12 on the right note, given that Oklahoma's dominated this league since they, you know, since you guys got here in 2000, 1999, how important is that to leave the right way and really to enter on a high note into that next SEC? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's all about Oklahoma. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, meeting our standards and our expectations in this building first and foremost. I think the byproduct of that is leaving on a on a on a high note. It's putting ourselves in position where you know we have a chance to compete to go to Arlington and uh, that's what this program is all about that's what our standards are uh, and it's being inside out and again for everybody else that you know at the end of the year oh yeah well I guess this is our last year you know uh, it's about us focusing on on improving and getting better the daily focus of improvement uh, you know, being better than where we were a year ago is incredibly important. That goes without saying, but the, the expectations and the standard of, of excellence is how you want to end it. And you know, uh, how we came into the conference and, and ending it the right way. Uh, that's, you know, from a pride standpoint, uh, you know, and from 
being keepers of the room, uh, like uh, we are as coaches and players, you know, that's the expectation. And, uh, and it's got incredible excitement in this conference, you know, with the new teams that they've added. And uh, there is a lot of excitement. You certainly represented uh, in a bowl game's only conference in college football that had eight, eight bowl teams. And then also we played in the national championship. So uh, there's a lot to, uh, to shoot for and a lot of competition. It's going to be a great year. Uh, we're incredibly excited. You know, this is a team that's put in a great deal of work and uh, it's got a, a different focus to them than what we had a year ago. So I expect uh, a great year. I believe you guys are going to have an excellent season. And in order for you to do that, to achieve your goals, to get to Arlington, compete for a Big 12 title, give me three things that need to happen for your football team to meet those dreams, meet those goals. Yeah, play better run defense, uh, play better run uh, red zone defense, and then be more efficient on offense, you know, third and fourth down.